Okay, so this is the main journey website and we want to rebuild this sidebar, which is super, super cool. Um, so let's see how many different design this uh, sidebar has and have and, and uh, to, to be able to rebuild it exactly the same. So this is the desktop. As you can see, as I scroll down, it stick to the top and scroll down with uh, with the page scroll. If I'll re re uh, change the screen side, so this is a tablet and now we have a different design. Uh, basically, it's exactly the same, but here we are, uh, we see only the icons and we have a, uh, a different value here. And in mobile, we have a completely different experience, which is uh, uh, now it's not a sidebar, but it's a header like stick to the to the bottom or on top all the design and it's scrolled down with us. It's kind of an application experience. Um, so let's see the rebuild that I've already created. So this is built on studio. Uh, and you can see it's working exactly the same for desktop. So let's uh, uh, view the, uh, the uh, tablet design. So you can see right here we have only icons and in mobile we are getting exactly the same experience. Um, this is using um, a few lines of CSS and then you can see that you can also open and close the menu. So let's see how we can build it on studio. So here I have my editor open twice because I don't want to rebuild everything. Um, so I'll copy paste from different pages. So I, I have uh, the original um, design that is already completed and this is a new page. So first of all, we will build the sidebar itself. And then we can see how we can use it inside the header and make this experience. So um, the first action that I'm doing, I will add a container and I need to set the width of it in pixels because also here in Me Journey it's in pixels. You can use any units you, you need to your design, but I know that it should be 240 pixels width. So let's center it and make it a bit bigger something like this. All right, so at the top part, I, I need to have my logo. So let's add a text element. You can use an SVG, it's not really important. So this is, will be my logo. Let's do like 20 pixels made for display bold. Okay, it should be white. Great, and let's change the value I used my journey and not me journey. All right, so this is the first part. The second part, you know what, let's make it, um, let's see how I did it right here. Uh, so it's located inside of its own container and I think that I know why, no, not exactly. Um, all right. So let's align it to the left the top and it will be 100%. By the way, I'm using the advanced uh, sizing. So you can change it right from here. Go to site, sorry, go to view and then sizing, uh, sizing and always show advanced. Great, so this is my first action. And as you can see, it stick to the edges, which I don't want. So I need to give some air around all uh, the container area. So I'll just copy same values because I, I don't want to waste my time. So 20 pixels from top, uh, it's not even equal. So 22, 20, 32, 20. So 22 pixels and then 20, 32, 20. Right, yes. Okay, now it's look better. Um, the second thing that I need, I need to have a single button here and three or five buttons at the bottom. So I'll let's copy this one just for this example. 
Um, and I can paste it. Well, it's not this one actually. So let's duplicate it and cut it and try to paste it. Okay, so let's see how this button work. Okay, because I, I've already designed it and it has different experience, uh, different design for uh, tablet and mobile. So let's see how it works. So I use the, uh, if you go to buttons, you have style buttons because it's contained um, an icon. Okay, so it has, um, it has a, a background color, uh, a stroke and in hover, I'm changing the opacity. You see, it's 20% opacity of the color. And then it, on hover, it's changed to 60. Um, that's it basically, I think. And in, in a tablet, you can see that uh, there is no value. There is no label to the button. There is only icon and then I'll change the width to make a perfect circle and then uh, I'm getting like this ex experience which is basically same as here okay which we have only the icon so let's um, this is what we have on on uh, on sorry on tablet and in mobile I have a different layout which is the the icon as you can see right here the icon is where it goes okay the icons is on the top and the value in the label is on the bottom okay so this is basically my layout uh, of a single button but I have a, a few changes between the buttons because as you can see right here I have different color and right here, the the, um, the value, the label is on the center, kind of. Okay, uh, so this is um, um, specifically for this design. You can do, of course, whatever you like. So I'll copy um, this tag element, and sorry, I copy the I copy it also to uh, our new page. Okay, so it's right here and it's stick to the bottom but right now you can see that we have uh, let's call it a uh, um, menu wrapper okay and so we have everything inside this is the logo and this is the menu right so we need to solve a problem so because we need to build a, a design that is like amazingly responsive okay so we need to take in count if you have like in your design a lot of buttons you need to make sure that if if you're getting like uh if you have a small um height of window so you don't want things to overlap each other right so what we need to do here we need to separate between the logo and the rest of the menu so the first action that we are doing is ad adding uh, advanced css grid and then i love to use this customized grease grid on canvas so i click and then i drag the lines that i want to create so right here i want to create uh, a row only for the um, the logo okay so uh, this logo should be at the center and I don't remember exactly the height of this row So let's check right here. It's max content, which I guess The height is coming from this container, which is mean height of 54 pixels So instead I can change the minimum height of the row to 54 for pixels and not pixel asterisk which is responsive you need so it looks something like this and I will add some gaps so I will never get to a situation when the button is too close to my logo. So let's do, just do a random number of 20 pixels, right? So this button is still stick to the top, but let's see what's happened if I'll make my container height much, much lower. So as you can see right now, this 
the showcase button is collide with is overlapping with uh, the bottom men menu so what do i need to do basically i want to create um a horizontal scroll inside to avoid this situation so this value is changing when i'm dragging which is not good so let's change it to 54 you know what let's do it exactly the same as i did there so i'll place this me journey logo inside a container and i'll give it uh 54 pixels minimum height i'll make sure that i don't have height in my row let's change it to fr and this is okay and now let's realign the logo to the center great just for seo it should be a paragraph okay great um okay so to create a horizontal scroll what should i do i need another container okay so i'll do something like this okay and this button should be inside this container and it should have a grid of of two rows why because we have two parts this element is stick to the bottom this stack let's make it a hundred percent and sorry not a hundred percent it should be fixed no okay yeah yeah i know okay let's do it later um so i need to make sure that they will never uh overlap each other so i'll use another grid so let's do exactly the same so this one the first row will be one fr uh, sorry max content same as the height of its content which is the bottom and the second row will be a file like taking all the rest of the space and i can add like 10 pixels so now let's see what's happened if i'll make everything much smaller so this one has margin from top it should be docked to the bottom so now you can see that no matter what i do they respect the position of each other okay so now let's drag this container inside and make it a hundred percent stick to the top and to the left and that's it basically okay but this part should be located at the bottom okay so we need to set minimum height of 100 percent okay so now it looks good and this tax should be a hundred percent now it looks good okay but this should be one fr okay but how do i create a horizontal scroll uh sorry uh, overflow scroll if i have too many buttons here that is not fitting my screen okay so what we, we are going to do we are going to give a maximum height to the wrapper the main wrapper so let's change it first of all i need to update these units this one should be max content the bottom one should be one fr okay and the height will be 100 vh okay and this one the inner container should be overflow scroll so if you don't have enough room inside this row you should get um start to be scroll so how we can quick uh, test it basically i can change the height of this one to be something like 200 uh, sorry 300 pixels okay so now you can see that the menu is not fitting right but you can see that i can scroll inside so let's go to preview you can see it much better so you can see that when the content the menu content is not fitting the uh, for the uh, to the height of the parent i have here inner scroll 
which is exactly what we need to, to do. So this container should be 100 VH. Because my website is not a premium, I need to remove also this banner, which is 50 pixels height, I think. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, it's 50 pixels. So I'll change the height. You don't need to do it, but I need to. Calculation 100 minus 50 pixels. Okay, so this is the absolute height of my container, uh, of my screen, sorry. This should be one FR. Okay, great. So now I want to create, um, uh, now we need to create um, a sidebar for me, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another header Okay, this is the header, the original that is already wor working great in my um, uh, in my website. So I'll create another one. So let's duplicate it and let's keep it like uh, you, you see the, the CSS. This is something that I added to remind me that I have CSS or this element. Um, so now I want to add this header to my page and remove this um, this header from my page. So let's do add to and remove it from the rebuild. And now I have only the duplication, the this one, the copy one. All right. So as you can see, it's transparent. It's transparent so but we will do everything from scratch so let's give it a white color and let's set 90 pixel I think this is the default okay so and it should be empty so let's remove it and basically this is a, a header so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm changing its position to be pinned okay so as I just scroll down it scrolls down with me right the second thing that I want to do is to drag my sidebar that I uh, designed. Actually, we forgot to do something. So let's freeze for a second. Okay. So we designed the desktop, right? But what about mobile? So because I already set the uh, how this element should. First of all, I need to remove this text scale. Uh, because we already, I already set the design for the button, so it's already changed the layout um, from text and icon to icon only. All right, and uh, but the sidebar it's too um, too big, right? And this value should be changed. So first of all, this value should be something else. So let's. Um, duplicate this logo and here I'll set it to be tablet so I know this one is for tablet or tablet only because it won't appear on desktop on uh, mobile so this one which is for desktop only desktop only should be hidden right here so let's hide it and let's realign this one and I want a different value it should be like this great so now I need to set a different total width of the entire sidebar so let's just copy the same value right from here it's 82 pixels and let's see the padding it's this one is changed from 32 to 22 so let's change the padding to 22 and the width the total width will be 82 pixels so you can see everything is fitting very very nice actually if I will do like a max content I should get almost different result but let's keep it that way this text should be aligned to the center I think it's look much much better um, 
and in in mobile we should get uh, something uh, different why is oh my header is too big but still why this one is not at the center okay so here you can see that I don't see anything why because basically let's see um, this container it's it's the all the menu items right so this is the bottom bottom um, uh, bottom sets of of buttons so in mobile um, it's more complex why because we have a different buttons so we have menu that it not exist right here in desktop uh, showcase we still have showcase let's see we have menu we have showcase and we have sign in so this one so all these th three should be gone and the logo okay so let's see how we can do it so this in mobile in mobile should be hidden the help so it's hidden the dark mode is hidden the sign up is hidden and the sign in is visible but we don't see it right now because it's uh, outside of the boundaries of its parent so what do we need to do basically we need to set it to be a hundred percent this is the um, uh, the wrapper okay and the height should be let's set it to be auto right now and let's dock it to the bottom so we can see it so it looks something like this but we don't need the logo container logo container we don't need it so let's hide it okay so uh, now we see something like this which is bad um, basically because because we have two rows as you can see uh, we need to set it to be a single row so how we can we do it so let's change this one to be auto and auto and not a hundred percent so now it looks something like this let's change it from two rows to three columns because we have um, let's go to mobile we have three columns three uh, icons so let's change it to other it should be three columns and one row let's click apply so it looks something like this uh, sign in should be the last one so it's inside this stack so let's select the stack and place it on the third column it should be a hundred percent and let's align it to top uh, sorry to center and um, to, to center of its own um, cell the showcase should be on the second column again let's center it and it should be a hundred percent with and its height is 44 let's see right here yeah it's 44 pixels so let's um, you know what I'll set the parent to be 44 pixels and then all the buttons will be a hundred percent height oh it's not having okay so the parent will be auto and each button will be a uh, 44 pixels so we are missing the menu right this should be fr we're missing the menu button which is which should appear only for mobile so what we can do basically we can uh, uh, copy this uh, button or add a, another button so let's just drag it right here so when you add in elements only on mobile it should appear only on mobile so just for the example it should be a hundred percent and 44 pixels height okay something like this and it's you can see that it's not matching with the design with all the rest so we can 
copy design elements from all breakpoint and paste it right there. And then we can change the name to menu. And now we have the menu button, okay? Still, we have here on the wrapper, we have two rows. So we need to change it to one, okay? And it's getting height from the row itself. So let's change it to a far. And now it's very, very uh, uh, fitting, right? We need to change this icon uh, to menu. So let's go to settings and then um, change the icon. Let's go to media from Wix um, actions, I think. Yeah. So right here we have kind of a menu. Let's select this one. Okay, super cool. So now we have the design for the menu container um, for all breakpoints. Okay, we have mobile, tablet, and desktop. Amazing. Oh, I see that here. I can see the tablet. So let's hide it. We don't want it here. But we do need it in tablet. Let's just validate that it's not appearing in mobile. Oh, it's not because the, the container itself is hidden. Okay, great. So now after we finish to design our uh, sidebar container, we will do a simple action by dragging it in, into our pinned header. All right. It should be dock to the top and dock to the left. Great. Okay, so you can immediately see that as I scroll down, this container, which is higher than our actually height of the header, is scrolled down with us. Okay, you can see this tiny banner that I scroll up and down, and this is freezing completely with me. But the header is taking too much space, right? So the simple solution is to take it, set it to be, I don't know, 10 pixels, something very, very small. Uh, don't do zero. Uh, sorry, you can do zero, but if you do zero, uh, you won't have the options right here. So I'll show you. If it would be zero, so now you see we have, um, because the editor thinks that this element is not in the viewport. so. Do something like one maybe, and then you can do everything you need. Um, and it should be transparent, okay? So now let's put some content here so we can see how it works on the live site. So let's duplicate this container. And okay, so let's see how it looks on the live site. So let's go directly to the inner page go to URL and now we can see we have the sidebar and as we scroll down it's freezed and scroll down with us actually because it's right here inside the header which is pinned and let's test the uh, breakpoints so this is tablet amazing right and mobile mm, not really okay uh, you won't get this experience because this header is already containing CSS, which you don't have. So I'll show you later how to do it. Um, okay, so this is an amazing start. But what do uh, uh, another thing that we need to do is look at this. If I'll take this content and dock it to the left, actually it's behind the sidebar, which is bad. So how we can solve it? We will go to the page itself and we will add to the page same padding as the width of this sidebar, which is 240 pixels. All right, not from all, only from, not from all direction, only from the right, the left side. Sorry, 200 and 240, this should be zero. Okay, so now this is uh, from which the section is started, not from, um, 
from the zero, but from uh, with margin of uh, uh, 240 pixels. Okay, amazing. So this is the solution. Now, now we need to, um, what did I do? Okay, now um, we need to fix uh, the header on mobile because we have a, a totally different experience. Um, first of all, I'll change the sections um, color to be something else so we can see what we are doing. Um, and this will be very, very dark. So let's give it different colors. Okay, so basically, okay, so basically, if we'll change the viewport, so now you can see that we have this empty area. So this is basically, it's only because we didn't update the padding from desktop to tablet. So in tablet, we will we'll need to change this value to be the same value as the sidebar, which is 82. And in mobile, we don't even need it. So it will be zero, okay? So as you can see right here, in the editor, it looks like this. It looks like the header is stick to the top, right? Which is something what we don't need to, we don't want. And also, you can see we have an extra height, so let's change it to be auto based on the content. Why it's smaller than the content? Because we have a minus margin to the menu wrapper, so let's remove it. So now the header is fitting uh, perfectly. Um, but we need it to be docked to the bottom. So how can we do it? For that, you need to use some CSS. So I'll show you exactly what I did. So right here, I selected the header and, and I give it a, a class, my custom header, all right? So if we will open the global CSS and we will go to the my custom header, so let's see what values I give it. So the first, first of all, I'm changing the position of it to be fixed, fixed to the page. And then I'm setting uh, the alignment to be bottom zero, stick to the bottom and left zero. The width will be 100% of the viewport. And this is for the gradient, which I'll show you um, right now. But first of all, Let's publish it and see how it behave on mobile. So let's go to mobile. So this is the experience that we have, we had before. So let's now refresh it. And now it's, uh, it's perfectly fitting to the bottom of, of the, uh, of the page. And as we scroll down, it's scrolled down with us, but where is the gradient? that I don't see. So my guess is that we need to select the header and click arrange and bring to front. Maybe. Um, so let's try it really, uh, really quick. And refresh, go to mobile and no, I don't see it. So let's do inspect to see what's up. Okay, so this is the view. And then I want to show you from where this header getting the class. So this is the header. Let's make it bigger. This is the header. Okay, and this is the section within the header. And right here, you can see that it gets position fixed, bottom, left, everything that I, I done, that I did. Um, I don't know why I don't see the gradient right now. So 
no it's not related let's try to change it why cannot pick okay so let's do something else let's do drop shadow it's not the right location drop so it's called box shadow box shadow let's do 10 pixels 10 pixels 10 pixels black this is not the right direction i think oh now we can see it oh i know why because i have a background color um so basically i need to select this container and make it transparent and also this container this is the the buttons container and now you can see inside the editor that we have this gradient so let's republish it and actually check it how it looks on mobile so yeah so now we have this uh, cool gradient color. Um, okay, so we have a different experience. The, the last thing that I want to do, I want to prepare you um, for, for the next tutorial, but I forgot to do something. So right here, if you go uh, to the menu, uh, to the mobile view, if I click on menu, nothing is happening, right? basically what do i want to do is to open the hamburger menu right so there is two ways to do it uh, i'll show you the easy way and then i'll show you how i'm doing it um i think it's the better way but never mind um okay so by default you can see here you have this uh, hamburger menu it's right here it's appear only on tablet and mobile but I don't need it on tablet because I have the sidebar, but in, um, um, in mobile, I do need it. So first of all, I make it um, the top element so I can select it, okay? So it won't be covered by any other elements. And then if I select it, you can see that I can open the menu. So I want to toggle on and off um, this uh, to open this uh, con menu container. And actually, I called it hamburger menu container. I give it this ID. Okay, so the first method that you can do is basically you can use, instead of this menu icon, you can use this menu icon, okay? But be because you cannot add a text below this uh, uh, menu button, so I created my own, this element, okay? So the way it works is, like this so to open a menu it's basically the code should be because menu is appearing in multiple pages so you need to do it inside uh, the master so where is it inside the master page JS okay uh, so you don't need to re uh, um, uh, recall this function it will run on all pages okay um, so I've created a function that is basically related to open and close as you click this menu. Um, so it's called open hamburger menu. All right. So first of all, I am selecting the menu container. What is the menu container? It's the hamburger menu container. So if you open this menu, so basically this is the hamburger menu container. It's the green one. Okay, so you need to change. What's up? Why oh, it's not opening? Ah, uh, you need to change this ID. Great. So uh, the second one is the open menu button, the open menu hamburger button, which is this one. This is its ID, but it's not exactly this one because it's it's clone of the button I created on this page. Okay, so basically it should be open 
hamburger menu button but because I already have used this ID I will give it one okay so let's change it to be one the second thing is the menu is open uh, we have here we have here a variable which is monitor if the menu is open or not by default the menu is closed so it's false uh, later we will see how we are using it the uh, and then we have the menu icons so the open is basically this this state right so open is equals to hamburger menu button dot icon and to change the icon to something else as you open basically to close it should be uh, like X icon or something like this so what do I did is uh, I, I go to the media and I upload uploaded uh, to my um, uh, media I open this uh, actually this is close menu icon right so uh, this icon I upload it to my media and then I click on these uh, three dots and copy the URL and paste it right here so you need to change the close button to something you you want to uh, based on your design um, okay so all this was before we even said what to do so now I'm checking if uh, menu um, hamburger menu button is is rendered I think mm. so if it exists okay if it exists uh, you know what I will do something else uh, let's wrap it in try catch so it won't break your you you won't break your other code if you do have um, log um, toggle let's call this function toggle hamburger menu and let's print the arrow okay so now if the hamburger menu is exist what do we uh, we are setting what's happened when we are, are clicking on it right so we are checking if the menu is already open so we want to change uh, we want to close I want to demonstrate so let's go to this version so if menu is already open what do we want to do as you click on this one I want to close it right so sorry uh, so first of all we want to close the window and then we want to change the icon to the open icon uh, and then we are setting the menu instead of to be open is false because we just close it and we do the opposite for open um, okay so now it should work because I've changed the uh, the toggle button from uh, uh, to my new button so let's publish it and see how it works on this version so let's go to mobile and now if I click it's not refreshed yet I think if I click it's open the menu if I click again so and then and also the icon change to this uh, close icon if I click again it's closed amazing so this is what we wanted to achieve so far and and now the uh, I want to prepare you to the next tutorial which will be to build the layout of of all the mosaic uh, layout this this one so what we will do we need to match the design so let's go right here first of all we don't need this uh, background so let's remove the background from the menu wrapper we don't need it let's do it transparent also from the inner the, the score part we don't need it um, and all the sections should have uh, 
um, transparent background or dark background because it should be matched to the uh, just like this everything as you can see everything is black and we can see only the UI on top um, so let's check the tablet it looks okay I think oh we forgot to change this one okay so everything is black let's publish it to see how it looks All right, so now it starts to getting look something like this, right? So as I scroll down, it looks great. If I'll change it to tablet, it looks great. If I'll change it to mobile, it also looks great. So now you can see the effect as is, if I scroll, you can see right here, we have a kind of a gradient from uh, solid black to transparent black so this is the effect that we wanted to achieve all right so this is how to create um a sidebar in your wix studio website the second part uh will be focused on how to create this layout so uh, you can see only the ui part okay to build this uh layout and the search of course and to change the amount of items that we have uh, here in desktop, we have five. At tablet, we have three. At mobile, we have two. Um, to, so this is the next tutorial. Uh, uh, so until next time, keep building amazing sites on Studio and let me know in the comments if it's helped you.